Just getting our seats here at the moment, and Hads, I've got to say, this is a very, very special place. Yeah, well, this is the, one of the most iconic places you can be at the SCG, and, and I'll give you an example of that. If you just listen closely now, it's the only place in the ground where you can have a cold beer in a glass. And, and this place here is so special. Yes, it's a, a big event, but this is where people come for their holidays. They book this place a year in advance. You have a lot of people come from the country. You've got the country members here. And even though it's raining out there today, everyone's got a smile on their face. It's a great day because it's um, Jay McGrath Day, but it's the only place to have a beer in a glass, Gussie. Yeah, it's a very nice place to have a beer today. Unfortunately, if you're just joining us now, no place so far here on day three. And uh, the groundsmen are out there doing their best, but this Sydney weather is doing us no favours at the moment. But we thought we'd bring you around the grounds to give you a little bit of uh, a feeling, I suppose, of... Uh, of, of the SCG and like you say this is the place where the members come and get together we've just taken a couple of seats off a couple of the old boys who a year ago booked a, a meal with some red wine which they're about to go and enjoy well it's interesting the, the two guys that were just here they, they booked this spot one year ago they're, they're from Canberra they come up here every year and catch up with each other and no matter what game on whether it's South Africa West Indies or the Nashes series it's still a massive event here today in the members and you, you just have to look at the smiling faces it, it, this is where people come to catch up. They, they don't see each other for 12 months, but they come here, they, they've got a cold beer. It's a very special day, as we said. Everyone's in pink. You, you never thought people our dad's vintage would wear pink, but now that's, they get it out of the back of the cupboard, they put their pink shirt on, and, and they enjoy the catch-up. Exactly, and they're proud to wear it for all the right reasons as well. So please get involved, even though there's no cricket, get involved looking after the McGrath Foundation. Now, this is a very special place for me personally too, Ads, because as a member, my dad put me down as a member. I was born in Crown Street in Surrey Hills, only a couple of k's from here. He actually came to the SCG, got the enrolment form that day, filled it in, and I became a member when I was about 12, and I ended up having my 21st birthday in this very room. And this is where the main table was with black tie function, everyone out on the boundary getting photographs and stuff. It was absolutely fantastic. So this is a very special spot. Well, it is a special spot. It's a heritage listed, but the, the, what makes it special, Gus? Yes, it's a beautiful building and it's got great history, but it's the people. It's the people that come and meet here year after year. They enjoy catching up with each other. Some people haven't seen each other for the whole year, and this is the place they, they meet each year. And this is why the Sydney Test is so special to, to so many people. Your 21st, though, there would be a lot of good stories here. <laughs> if this bench could talk... Wow, you would be in some trouble. Yeah, I'll tell you off air. Let's talk about either side of this particular bar of the two dressing rooms of the players. So as we stand, and if people can imagine, we're looking out at the ground at the moment. To our left is the opposition. To the right is the Australian home dressing room, which you have been in for so long, mate. Just tell us about some of the stories that goes in those dressing rooms, but also, do you spend time in each other's dressing rooms, or does that depend on how the teams get along? This is normally the last test match of the summer, so if it was an Ashes series, for example, at the end of this test match, England would come across, they'd, they'd bring their rescue, we would have as much beer as, as they could drink, and we'll enjoy the moment in there. We've been in battle for five test matches, you've gone hard at each other, but at the end of that time, that's where you enjoy yourself in there, and it's always open at the end of a test. I remember Matthew Hayden's last test match, and, and we're sitting in the change room, and Matthew Hayden stomped his foot on the floor. And I remember looking at him with Andrew McDonald. I'm thinking he needs to retire. He's lost his um, he's lost his marbles. He's a great at the game. Then he did it again. And we said, "What are you doing?" He said, "You young kids, wait and see." And about the fourth time he did it, there was a knock back. He said, "We're on. We're in our jock straps. Some in their budgie smugglers. We took off down the cellars underneath the change room." So we spent the next four, five, eight hours. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> That's a technicolor we don't need to get into. We spent that time in the cellar drinking red wine. You're, you're having your scotches with all the ground staff and everyone at the trust. And that's the tradition of the Sydney Test Match. So that happens at the end of every Sydney Test Match. There's a knock and then all of a sudden someone says, we're on here. And you go downstairs and is all that drink already down there? Or do you pile that in from these bars and it's just a spot where you can feel safe and protected from the elements and mobile phones and journos? Well, there's definitely no mobile phone service down there, which is great. But it's just a seller of the, the SCG. It's a seller of this bar. So all the alcohol's down there. You sit down there. And, and it's the last test all the time. It's not just a big event for, for the players, but a, a lot goes into a te uh, test match from the, the Sydney Cricket Ground Trust and all the staff, the ground staff. So you get together down there. You enjoy a good laugh. You share some stories. But Matthew Hayden introduced that to us. 
I think that's fantastic and a story I've never heard before. What about the opposition dressing room? Do you go into there very often or is it always the opposition coming into the home dressing room? And is this something that happens not just here but other grounds around the world as well at the end of a series? Well, the protocol normally at the end of a series is for the the home team to invite the opposition into their room and, and that's what happens here. I've very rarely been into the the away change room. The only time I was in there was actually my first time here at the SCG. In the Canberra Comets days, we played a game against New South Wales and, and we were in the opposition change room. And it didn't feel quite right, Gussie, if I'm <laughs> telling you. Someone who's grown up in the country, moved to, to Queanbeyan and always been a New South Wales And to be in the other change room, I, I didn't like it. They've, in, in there, they've got one of the cupboards has got from... Uh, I don't know where it goes back to, but every time you get a century, you ride it on the wall. So they've got guys that have scored a century, and they, they ride it up there, the date and who was against. So I witnessed that, but it's more fun in, the, in our change room. You walk into our change room, you've got beautifully Clarks up there, you've got David Warner's 100, Ricky Ponding, Doug Walders, then you've got the Fifers on the other wall. It, it's just a great tradition of this ground. So when you look at Lords and you know if you score 100 at Lords or get a five wicket, it's actually put up there very postulately by a you know, professional. You're talking about here, it's actually written with what, like a, like a, just some sort of pen or marker pen or something? In the away change rooms, they just get a pen and whatever they got at the time, they, they write it up. There's different colours up there now. But in ours, it's beautifully written. So, C. Smith yesterday, he, he got his 30th Test 100, big milestone. By the time he gets to the ground today, his name would have already been up on the honour board in the change room. Usman Khawaja's name would have been there but they wouldn't have put the number there yet. Maybe his first ever 200, but when you walk in, you look up there and you just think, oh, that's a special place to be. Oh, mate, just you talking about it's a special place to be. So just before we wrap it up in here, and everyone, if you know, we're in the members bar at the SCG. Gus Wallen here with Brad Haddon just talking about this particular site, the fact that it's just so historical, so many great memories. Um, there's no play so far here on day three at the SCG. So Kawaj is still on 195. And just at the start of the day, just before 10 o'clock, yourself, me and Tubby Taylor, were talking about whether there'll be a declaration or not. 195 for one player who's never scored a double century. Do you take that 20 minutes out to do that with the change of innings? Or do you declare now, especially now we've lost this, the morning? It's a really interesting one, Gus. And the one thing about Usman, he won't make that decision. That that decision will be taken out of his hands. Yes, it'll be great for, for him to get 200. He's deserved it. He's owned this ground for the last couple of years. He's got 300s in a row. It's a great milestone to, to get 200. But it's just how much time we lose in the game. And when they get on, whether it suits Australia to take the, the new ball straight away. My gut feeling they'll, they'll give him the opportunity to quickly get his 200 and get off and. As I said before, he's owned this venue. He, he was flawless yesterday. He took total control of the game. But no one Usman, it's not something that he'll worry about. He, he'll like the milestone. But the first and foremost, his thought process will be, how can we win this test match? And that's what the discussions will be in the change room. So no argument from him going, come on, boss, give us 20 minutes so I can get this done and dusted. No, at my whole time playing, whether it been for New South Wales and Australia, whether it be in that change room or all over the world, Usman Khawaja wouldn't say one thing. What, if Paddy decides it's the best thing for the team, he'll take his pads off and life goes off on and he'll go out there and try to do the best they can to get 20 wickets and win this test match and win 3 nil. So Usman won't have any say and he'll be comfortable no matter what. Do you still think we've got enough time in the game if we get on today at some stage? Two days left, let's say we get those days in. Is that enough time with Australia in their position and at the moment to win this test match and to win the Series 3 zip? Yeah, 100%. Uh, as we've seen through South Africa this summer, if you get them five down, they're five down all out. And the one thing you normally see with the South African team, they normally stand in front of you, look in the eye, and they want to compete. The one thing we haven't seen from their batters is the willingness to compete for long periods of time. And, and, and the Australians all know that. that They've gone in with a different attack. They've got two fast bowls. They've got Nathan Lyon, I, I think, who's going to be a nightmare out on this wicket. They've got Ashton Agar coming back. It's a it's a big opportunity to see how he bowls. Will he play a holding role? When, when does he attack? So it's going to be a great learning experience also for him. But I still think they can bowl him out twice. We certainly hope so. And, of course, this is the last few days for the Australian team to be together. They'll go to big bash action. Quite a few of the stars are going back into that. And, then of course, we've got a huge series in India. So you're talking about Agar, for instance. This is a one opportunity for him to bag a fifer, do really well, field well, bowl well, because he won't get a chance to bat and to prove himself to get on that plane. 
Well, if you have a look at the, the way the Indian series pans out, it, this is a similar structure of a team as what they're going to do. Is it going to be Ashton Agar batting at seven? You've got um, Green to, to come back in. Maybe he can play the second fast bowling role. But they'll take a lot of plays depending on conditions. But the one thing they will do in all the games in India, they'll play two spinners. And it's an audition for Ashton Agar. He's improved a lot over the last couple of years. He's got a lot of confidence in, in white ball cricket. And early in the year... Um, he was playing in the Prime Minister's 11 game. And the one thing he did really well, he tied up an end. Um, he, he allowed Murphy to bowl at the other end and attack. And that's what his role is going to be in this test match. He's got to tie one end up and allow the other bowls at the other end to attack. And of course, five years ago, he got a test 99 as well. Hats, thank you so much. So we're going to sign off here. Gus Wallen and Brad Haddon in the members bar here at the SCG. As I said, no play so far here on day three, which is an absolute shock. So thank you. I'll finish my beer because you've done most of the talking. You get stuck into it. Hats.